Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. We're back in the FPS series tutorial um, and we're going to be looking at doing unarmed uh, attacks today. Nothing too special. We're not going like full on combat here. We're just going to do like a few punches, punch, punch, uh, and do some damage, hopefully down the line. Um, and we're going to set this up in a way that whatever weapon we have in our equipped slot, it will uh, just run it off a switch and basically do what we want to do, depending on what we're using. So if we've got food in our hands, it's going to eat. If it's a bottle of water, let's say we drink. If it's a gun, we shoot, and if it's uh, an arm, unarmed, we punch, and if it's melee, we will do like a swing attack. We're going to keep it very basic like that, but you can expand on this, uh, I'm sure, um, once you understand how I'm doing this. So the first things first is I am over on Mixamo, and I found this lovely punching animation. I believe it's this one here. It's literally just called Punching, uh, description Cross Punch. Um, and I have downloaded a left and a right. So if you want a left or right animation, you can literally just hit this mirror button on the bottom down here and click on it on and it will swap the sides that it uses it. So download one of each. So one for the left and one for the right and uh, drag it into your project. Um, if you open up the content drawer and drag it into here, um, those animations, and obviously make sure it's assigned to your skeleton that you're using. Mine is set up to test subject Michael, as we all know at this point. And um, what we want to do is, you'll see it here, I've done it here, We, which is once you find it, so we've got punching left here, and we've got the punching right here. Right click on both of them, go to the create, and create the anim montage. And you're going to want to open both of those up. I'm going to drag this over so you guys can see because it, it was on the other screen. This is what you should have at this point in time. And what we want is um, to change this to something. Now, I have gone ahead and set up a uh, right arm cache uh, like we did with the left arm. I did do a right arm version as well. Uh, just because I thought it would be cool to have some animations that are um, using the right arm only as well. And I thought that would be cool for punching, but I, I'll i get to that in a moment. But if you want to set up the right arm ready to do uh, certain actions with the right arm, you want to use the cache pose upper body, create a right arm slot. You can do this uh, again by going into your uh, to any anim montage and uh, going to the anim slot manager and adding a new slot and calling it right arm. You can do that. Uh, we, we did cover this before, but obviously it's just for anyone who's just looking at this tutorial. Uh, and then you want to cache that pose by dragging out and just typing cache pose and calling it right arm. I then went ahead and used that cache right arm to create our anim uh, rotation so that it matches the pivot of our spines. And um, I obviously used the upper body to blend that in to create our right arm offset. Again, we covered that in a previous tutorial, so just uh, go and check that one out. Um, delete that one out because we don't need it. Uh, and then what I did is I just blended everything together and added the right arm offset as the blend pose. And in the bone, I used the right shoulder and blend at five, mesh space rotation blend, and normalize by weight. Uh, so very simple, same thing as we've done in a previous episode, so I'm not gonna waste too much time on that. Uh, and then, Basically, into the punching left arm, I was going to, as I said, assign this to left body and uh, the left arm and the right arm uh, default groups, but uh, I found it actually looked a lot better using the upper body uh, instead of just using the arms. The arms just look like they're flailing around a bit, to be honest, uh, and you don't get the correct kind of outcome I was looking for. Um, so once you've set up those uh, anim montages and used the upper body, the other thing we're going to want to do for this, which is a little bit different, is we want to use a notify. And what that means, it's uh, if I pause this, uh, what I'm finding, so if you start from the very beginning of the animation and you follow it along, you'll see that the arm extends out and I got the furthest point, which is I thought was here. Uh, and I just right clicked and I added, if you click somewhere, it says add. If you do it on the line track one, 
you can add a notify and you can add a montage notify. So I just added one of those. I didn't name it. Um, I didn't see the need to name it, but you, you can name it if you want to. Um, it's up to you. But um, do this for the left and the right. Uh, and the reason we're doing that, I'll open the right one up as well. There we go. You can see I've done it here as well. Um, the reason we're doing that is because when we come to use the animation, we want to do it off of the furthest point where the arm is at. Uh, this is the code, but I'm going to remove this code so we can do it all over again. Uh, so let's just uh, grab that and chuck you up here. Okay, so all I've done at this point is I've got the left mouse button. You can literally do this by uh, just putting in left mouse and it comes up with the mouse event, left mouse button. Um, and we're going to use that for mainly all of our doing actions, so like eating, drinking, shooting, and punching, swiping. All that sort of stuff is going to happen with this left mouse. Uh, we might do like an aiming thing down the line, but that will use the right button. But for now, we're just going to use the left mouse button. And the first thing we're going to do is, so I created the inventory in the last episode, which was an array of item struts that we are going to utilize in order to uh, form our inventory. Now, what we want to do is we want to add an equipped item. Now, this equipped item is going to be um, where we house our item. So if we have an item in our hands, it, when we click on this button, we're going to use it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our equipped item, drag that out, and we're going to break it. There we go. So we get all of our lovely variables that are held in our item. And we're going to need to use our item enumeration. So we're going to switch on item enum and plug that into the press. Now, what this will do is it's going to get that equipped item and it's going to check what we set that item enum to. So if it's set to none, which is what we're going to be covering today, um, we want to do something. We want to either punch or, you know, again, if we're using food, we want to eat. If we're using medical, we want to apply bandages, for example. And we want to play those animations depending on what we're doing and then uh, complete the desired action, right? So, for example, with today, we're going to be using the punch. Um, if we're going to have food, we want to eat. Um, and we're just going to play those animations. Uh, and then from that point, on, we'll have a function that obviously either applies health or applies hunger, applies thirst, you know, all of those kind of good things. Um, and obviously shoot weapons. So we're kind of, you can see we're getting very close now to this kind of, um uh web weapon system that we, we keep talking about um you hopefully can see it all sort of playing out now so for today as i said we're focusing on none and none is just punching we're going to do some punching damage um and obviously do the animations for that now i have a left and a right animation i want to play and so i need a branch to begin with like so and uh, I need to determine basically whether something is zero or one. And what I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to get a random uh, integer in range. Just like that. And um, we can check whether it's one or zero. And if it's equal to one, or oh, not ten, because that wouldn't work. So we want one. We plug that in. We'll do, let's say, for example, if it's one, we'll do a right punch. And if it's false, we'll do a left punch. It's very simple. So the first thing we want to get is the play montage. And we're going to want to copy and paste that so that we can do both. Uh, and we need to then select our skeletal mesh, which is just our mesh here. And we'll just plug that into both. And then from the montage to play, we just want to grab those two animations. So I've got a uh, right animation and I've also got a left animation. Now it doesn't matter which one you put in where, it's gonna have the same desired outcome no matter what you do. Now, normally when I've spoke about play montages, I either come off the very top row or I come off on completed. Now today we wanna do something very different because we're going to be doing a uh, line trace uh, by channel, uh, which is here. And I only want this to play once the arm is fully extended because it's where it's going to come from. So that's just not, that's that's a bit of a lie. It's not gonna come from there. I was gonna try and do that, but I'm not doing that now. Um, 
but we're just going to do it off the notify begin because we don't want it to to check anything until it gets as far as it can <coughs> excuse me and we're going to set this line trace to persistent so we can see the line trace in front of us uh, and i'm going to do this from the follow camera uh, and we're going to get our forward vector so we know which way the camera is facing. Uh, and we're also going to get the world location. We're going to add to this. Um, and also we are going to plug this world location into the star and we're getting our forward location and we're going to do a times on this one, but we're going to change this pin to a float single precision. Uh, and then we're going to plug that into the plus. Oh, didn't like that. Did it? There we go. That's better. Um, may have to rechange that. Now I found a hundred worked pretty well, but again, it's up to you to kind of play with those figures and uh, see if you can get the desired sort of length that you're looking for. But I found 100 was pretty good. Uh, so what this is doing is it's getting the forward vector and it's um, timesing it by 100 units. Uh, and then we add that to our world location. So it's like wherever our location is plus 100 of our forward vector. Uh, and then we end the trace there. And we can actually already test this. This should be complete. Um, if we go into press play, we should start up here. And we can start punching left and right. Um, if I press T, you can see it as well. It's picking a lot of, oh, there you go. He's he's switching up the jabs uh, pretty nicely. Now, I will um, amend this a little bit so that it doesn't allow you to spam the hit button because that would be overkill. Um, but you can see that it's firing a line trace from um, our camera. And it's, you know not going far because let's be honest uh you wouldn't be punching too far but if we come up close to this guy you can see it's hitting him if i take a step away it's not hitting him so that's why i said i found 100 was pretty good you have to be pretty close um and the reason i'm using the camera oh hello you scared me a little bit there a second uh the reason i'm using the camera to check this is because um if I use the hands, it could get a little bit messy, like missing hits and stuff. So I use the camera um, in instead. But uh, obviously that's up to you. You can you can do it from uh, the socket. You can make a socket location and do it that way. Now it's not hitting this enemy because this enemy doesn't hold the class function that we do um, that we use. But um, it is obviously checking for hits on everything else. So so yeah. Oh gosh, she's she's gotten too close. Get away from me. Get get away from me. Um stay there, there you go. Get back get back on your your nav mesh. Uh so yeah, so that's kind of how I'm planning on doing punching. Now, the thing with punching is you can't play uh animation montages within functions, so I can't actually condense this into a function. You'll see actually where I did the code earlier. There, there this is my code that I did previously. I can delete that now. Um so we'll select everything and for now we'll just comment this off as um unarmed attack and that can sit up there like that uh the other ones will all be able to well actually i'm going to tell a lie here things like food and medical will probably play an anim montage because we only want to affect the upper half uh and getting animations that that use the full extent of um Holding items and, and things like that is very hard to get hold of. So unless you want to make them yourself, of course. But um, so we'll probably use these to utilize the carrying of food items and, of course, using them, etc. Um, because we also want this character to hold the item in its hand. But we'll, we'll play around with it and get a good um, kind of result uh, before we do that bit. Pistol, assault rifle, shotgun, sniper rifle, a melee will actually house um, its own um, anim section on the BP graph. On the anim BP graph, it will have its own section. 
for doing all that stuff. So we won't need to use anim montages for any of those things. But for the food and medical, we might also need to use anim montages. But the idea is that we can common these off, house them in their own sections. These can all be in functions. They'll be a lot neater. And then at the end here, we just need to check who we hit and apply either damage or um, apply health, etc. You know, things like that. Very simple stuff. So we're getting there. Um, we are getting there. Um, I'm trying to keep this as tidy and as straightforward as possible. If I do find any better solutions to any of this stuff as I go forward, obviously I will share them. Uh, but because we're dealing with so many different factors and we want to uh, put it, uh, in use them all in one sort of left click, it, it's uh, an interesting way of doing it. But Hopefully we get the desired result as we go forward. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. Uh, it's free to do, and uh, you can also change your mind down the line. Um, and if you're new here, consider hitting uh, that subscribe. Uh, I said that all wrong. <laughs> you get the picture. Subscribe, like, do all that good stuff, and uh, leave a little comment with anything you want me to add or change or any of that sort of stuff. And I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.